It's entirely possible that I'm having a midlife crisis. It's certainly not a case where I can have the wind in my hair. Got there first. But earlier this year, I decided to buy something for a bit of fun. A hairdresser's Porsche or one of the most fun cars you can have for reasonable money. There's two ways of looking at the Mazda MX-5. Doesn't matter what version you're talking about. It's not quite S2000 revable, but it will rev easily to sort of 6,000 RPM. In my case, a 2004, 26,000 mile NB model, the second generation of MX-5 or Miata. And one I found just by pure chance, one cold, dark, not particularly sunny February evening, well, a company called Ballantagger Classics posted it on Done Deal, and I pounced pretty quickly. And that's the thing with classic cars, as I've learned this year, if you want one, you've got to be quick. I am by no means an MX-5 expert, so feel free to get involved in the discussion down below and point things out and remark on things. That's fine. Uh, what my pretty inexperienced trained eye does know is sills are good, arches are good, engine bay is good. Only modifications I've made to the MX-5 since I got it. Put some brand new fresh continental rubber on all four corners and fitted a Sony head unit, which is perfect fit for the MX-5. So I can have CarPlay and maps and all those modern luxuries. And that's it. For those of you wondering about the VRT process, because this was a Northern Irish car, I was just liable for VRT and NOx emissions. And NOx is about 800 quid, VRT was about 1,000, so 1,800 all in. If you're buying a car from the UK, as in mainland UK, that gets a little bit more complicated, but since I bought this car even, they've relaxed the rules a little bit, and if your car has spent a significant amount of time in Northern Ireland, which apparently is about three months, and it's been a UK car, you're still not liable for the extra customs and duties charges. So worth doing your research on that if you are thinking of bringing something classic or otherwise in from England. Again, not an expert, so correct me if I'm wrong, but I think these are tombstone seats. The slightly more modern steering wheel doesn't have the climate control or air con, which kind of benefited me because I was able to slot in this Sony head unit which fits snugly, an actual handbrake and one of the best short shift five speed in this case gearboxes that you can get. A 1.8 litre petrol engine uh, powered by this beautiful little non-interference engine up front, rear wheel drive obviously and just a whole lot of fun. Simple, basic, even I was able to fit the unit to the car, so nothing is overly complicated. And it's nice having the option to be able to charge a device, use CarPlay, and maps, and it doesn't really look aftermarket to my probably biased eye. And looking around the interior, it's in pretty good nick for what is almost a 21 year old car. This 1.8, petrol, naturally aspirated engine with barely 140 brake horsepower that's barely 1,000 kilos is just a fun car that's never really going to get you too into trouble. I mean, it will do motorway speeds, but I don't really feel that comfortable doing them, if I'm honest with you. Uh, the five-speed gearbox, however, the short shift in it is one of the best gearboxes you will ever ever drive and I can assure you of that. Uh, I test drove some boxers during the summer and bar one with a short shift. The Mazda is, is easily as good anyway. I don't want to say it's better but it's yeah it felt just fine. If you are considering buying something for fun uh, just be very very careful with larger cars uh, only today I was coming to a roundabout, one of the worst 
most dangerous points you'll be in your MX-5 with large SUVs around. And I've no idea why, um, but this driver just didn't see me. I was kind of preempting what he was doing. You're always kind of on your guard to be watching out for people to do just silly things. I suppose it's probably what it's like to be a motorcyclist. I've no idea in terms of miles per gallon what this car does. All I know is I stick 20 quid into it. Is it even once a month? Maybe twice a month? And in that sense, that doesn't scare me about things like Boxster S's because I know I'm not going to be using large amounts of fuel. It's more the road tax that's the pain in the you-know-what. Another thing that I like about this car, so it might seem odd, uh, I have a YouTube channel, hey, everyone, look at me, but it's kind of nice to stay under the radar in a car, and it's hard to do that in a convertible, but I think something like this that isn't necessarily flash, that isn't new, that didn't cost a fortune, you can kind of get away with the roof down on it. And no one's really going to judge you. Apart from the people that think you're a hairdresser, but they just don't understand. It is true what they say though. You take this thing out for a spin and you're just in a better mood afterwards. And even that's hard to put a price on. When you're driving normal cars day in, day out, not just me, I mean, perhaps you watching, you've got a normal family car. If you can pick something up for a few grand and you can afford to do it, I don't think you'll regret it. Be meaning to do the discs and pads. There is a sticky caliper on the driver's side, so might as well do everything while I'm addressing that issue. And that's it, it flew through the NCT, no advisories, it starts first every single time. It really has been trouble-free ownership. And I suppose I've been lucky because it's the first time I've ever bought anything like this. Um, between the mileage and the condition and just the fact that it doesn't seem to want for anything, uh, it's all just being touch wood so far so good. You're driving the car differently because you're not braking half as much to scrub off some speed, to stop the weight of the car making everyone feel uncomfortable as you shift around a corner a bit too fast. It, uh, I mean, it, it just goes around corners like nobody's business it's it's just and remains totally flat like it's such a joy to drive in that sense and it's not s2000 levels drop it out of second gear and it'll easily get to sort of 60 miles an hour in about 4,000 revs before it's time to to shift so you can wind it up a little bit and you never feel like you're kind of hurting the engine it's just it's the handling is i mean look it's well documented there's nothing probably in this video you're going to learn about mx5s that you didn't already know it's just such a fun little car let's have a blast in i've been driving it it's nearly two o'clock now i've been driving it pretty much since 10 a.m having not driven it in a few weeks and you, you kind of forget and then you jump in and it's a bit of a a reset and I don't know if you've seen the last episode of the Grand Tour but there's a bit towards the end where Jeremy remarks that one of the reasons they're finishing the show although I don't believe this really has anything to do with it but just that electric cars feel like white goods and they're a little bit well you know what he said so having something old it's just a bit of fun it does of course feel quite analog compared to lots of cars by today's standards uh, the suspension it's not overly harsh i suppose it definitely helps by the fact that it only has these tiny little 15 inch alloy wheels so uh, if you're not on a poor road surface it's smooth and comfortable uh, if things are a little bit imperfect in the the finish of the road it can get a little bit i wouldn't say unsettled but it, it's it's bumpy but again I, I don't know if it would be a car that you'd want to drive every day. Some of them, you know, the more modern MX-5s, perhaps. Uh, there's no reason why you couldn't use it as a daily. I have a hard top for it. <laughs> Just still pulls so well for 
you know, nearly a 21-year-old car and a totally standard engine, no modifications, no nothing. And it's a good lesson in power to waste when you are driving this thing. You realise how much a lighter car can, can shift. And there's no major <laughs> electronic uh, things that like to interfere with your driving enjoyment. You can, you can slide it a little bit. Um, the tyres are pretty new on this, so there's, there's still plenty of grip. But, yeah, for smiles on faces, I think it's worth, if you've got a few quid, or you know your credit union manager well, you've got nothing else to do with the money, something like this probably isn't going to lose any value either. If anything, it might make a few quid not really the reason i bought it it would be probably why i'd buy something like an s2000 but then i think you'd want to be someone who wraps that car up in cotton wool uh, particularly prices of the moment are like you're talking 20 probably 20 sterling for a good no low mileage s2000 uh, that's a lot of money for a car that you're not going to use that often and might sit in your driveway half the time. I love as well that there was a little Audi A5 there and uh, he just couldn't get near me. <laughs> uh, power to wait, power to wait. Okay, well look, it's nearly time to wrap up this. I wouldn't call it a review, just here's what I've had tucked up my sleeve all this time that you've been watching me review Nissan Leafs and stuff. So I uh, hope you'd enjoy this little video today of my own MX-5. Would I part with it? Well... So what next for my trusty Japanese friend with barely 26,000 miles on the clock? I really don't know. I can put it into storage. I can drive it every weekend, pretty much. I haven't driven it once when it's rained. I've used a product called Lanoguard underneath the arches. I still need to get under the car with it. Think of wax oil, but a lot easier to use. Uh, and it's made from sheep's wool, believe it or not. The other problem is once you get started with these cars, you enjoy them. And then you start looking at other cars like Porsche Boxsters, Honda S2000s. And that's kind of where my head is at now so would i let it go for the right owner the right deal possibly getting into something as raw as this puts a big smile on your face and the more cars evolve the more rare this kind of stuff is going to become and if you are a serious car head then having something like this anything classic in your collection will be a bit of a palate cleanser. And I think that's gonna be the case even more so as we head into the future. So thank you for following me on this little story today of this two owner before me, Northern Irish car. And as Jeremy Clarkson even once said, these things are good for your mental health. So with that in mind, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed today's video. I'll see you in something probably more normal very soon.